Hi guys, this is Omera from MMOHut.com and I'm going to do a first impression gameplay video for Fantasy Earth Zero, Fez Online. Free to play 3D action oriented MMORPG published by GamePot USA, developed by Square Enix. Now I'll spend about 5-10 minutes running around checking the game out and make some quick comments. If you guys want to play Fantasy Earth Zero or just learn more about it, check out our full review on MMOHut.com on the link on the right sidebar. Now we don't actually have a full review for that yet, but I'm just so used to saying it that I had to say it. The game actually just went open beta yesterday, and I'm doing the review now. Not really a review, just my first impression gameplay video over here. And I'm actually logging on to my press account right now, rather than my regular account. And I, I'm doing so because there's a tutorial in the game that's mandatory, and it takes a very long time to complete. Especially with so many people in the game right now trying to complete the tutorial at the same time. It's just a big mess right now, so I'm going to kind of skip that right now and just go on this character over here. As for playable classes, there's Scout, Warrior, and Mage. And those are the only three classes at the moment. So let's go ahead and play on this guy. Choose character. Okay. As for customization, there really aren't too many options, but it's an old game. It's not a big deal. It is just came out in the United States and North America, but it is an old game. It's pretty popular in Asia, and it used to be pay to play, but now it's all out free to play. So there's a bunch of continents in the game right now, and the game has five factions that are supposed to be vying for control of these territories, but right now there's only two factions available in the game, and I'm sure the rest will be unlocked later. And you can see over here these blue lands and these red lands are occupied by different countries. And I'm going to go ahead and join this battle over here. And this game touts its big RVR, so like realm vs. realm PvP action, and that's really where the game shines. It's almost like Savage 2, but with more people. And when I say almost like Savage 2, I mean it's practically just like Savage 2, except with uh, a different feel to it. I'm going to say older graphics, but some more interesting gameplay elements. And as, you can actually customize your character quite a bit. It's not so much as it's room based. And it's not like after a game your character's gone and you gotta kind of restart like Savage 2. And instead you save your character and you get to work on him, collect items, and then PvP. But since this is the open beta, the game's developer and publisher just said, you know what, just pretty much start at level 20 and try out the PvP, have some fun. But there will be a character wipe, so that's why they're letting you do that. I am level 25 actually, but when you, once you complete the tutorial you will start at level 20. And it is an action oriented game, you can see I'm moving my mouse and I move right away. And I have to pretty much aim at enemies with my crosshairs over here. Almost like an FPS or third person shooter as an archer. Although I can opt to use a dagger if I want. I do have skills as well, so I did distribute my skills pretty much randomly though. I didn't know what I was doing. Let's kill some people over here though. Basically the purpose of the game is to defeat the enemy's castle. Or keep, I forgot which one they have. One of us have a keep, one of us has a castle. And whichever, and we do so by capturing more territory. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a bit after I kill Maribel over here. It's actually a little bit hard to aim, it's not so easy. You actually have to aim it yourself. I can stealth, but I'm using my arrow rate over here, but there's not enough people, so I'll pass on that. That guy over there is on a mount. He got that because when, I, when one of us builds a building, I forgot what, what building he needs to build that, but he can pretty much transfer his crystals that he gets by doing really well into transforming into powerful. Uh, powerful character. So if you build a siege workshop, uh, I think it's actually called this just a workshop. You can, anyone can just go up to the workshop and then transfer 30 of their points to transform into a giant. And giants are really good against killing enemy buildings. And there are two enemy buildings over there and that's making it very difficult for us to pass through here. Those buildings shoot arrows at us. It's really annoying. And there's only three classes in the game right now, but I'm sure they'll add more later. And right now it's pretty simple because the three classes work in almost rock, paper, scissors, scissor style gameplay. Archers like I am, scouts, are supposed to be powerful against mages, but weak against warriors. Warriors are supposed to be powerful against us archers, but weak against mages. I, I, I screwed up somewhere, but uh, mages, yeah, I, I'm good against the mage, bad against the uh, warrior. Mages are good against warriors, but bad against scouts. Definitely screwed it up, sorry guys. Let's kill this guy over here. Because of that, it makes the gameplay a little bit simplistic, but there's still a lot of skill involved, and overall, whoever has more skill is going to win anyway. Because even, though I'm, even if I'm weak against the warrior, since I'm so amazing at this game, and amazing at every game, I can hold my own against one. And I'm just kidding, I pretty much suck at this game right now. I, I really prefer to play a warrior because I feel like my archer is really gimped. And in, even in the pro, when I was lower level, I just felt like I was much more powerful as a warrior, so. And as I die, it looks like it was a defeat, unfortunately. So we can view our rankings and see how much damage we did to other players and buildings, how many kills we got, our kills death, and 
were rewarded with experience based on a performance. Now, at, when the war ends over here, the battle ends, pretty much whoever won gets control of the territory. At least if the attacker attacks, they get control of the territory. Defender will keep the territory. And in 10 minutes, we can fight over this territory again, or we can just go somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and fight in a different battle. I can even walk around here. So it is an MMORPG. It's not just like a single room battle. We can see other players over here. I can say hi if I want. It'll appear right over my head. But yeah, let's go ahead and click exit battlefield for now. But let me show you guys my skills. You get SP every time you level up and you can distribute it across your various skills in the game. And the, each character has pretty much a handful of different builds. So there is some sort of customization in the game. It's not like everyone's the same character. But in terms of items right now, there's very little item customization. Because after all, this is just kind of a test for the game. It isn't really, it's, it's really a fake open beta because there will be a wipe. And normally in open betas, there really isn't a wipe. So yeah, fake open beta for the lose. Exit battlefield over here. Now I do want to kind of, you know, I'm kind of, kind of mad at uh, GamePot USA a little bit because the game was scheduled to release officially the open beta at 6 p.m. EST, but they pushed that back an hour. And then after it finally released, there was a lot of problems because each faction can only have 800 people in it. And that reached really quickly because the, there's an incredible demand to play the game. But so they had to, again, they had to do emergency maintenance and that took another couple hours. So. I had to wait a long time to play the game, which is always bad. So let's go ahead and join another battle over here. And we can basically, yeah, let's go over here. And each of the battlefields are actually different. So it does spice up the game in terms of variety, at least for the terrain. And if you get, there's crystals over here. You can mining crystals or something over there. And with the crystals you get, you can build buildings, transform, summon into, transform into summons, which are very powerful. And there's obelisk over there, and basically when you build an obelisk, it extends your your faction's territory. And the way the, game, the, the way the game really works is, we're not supposed to actually destroy the enemy fortress or castle. We're supposed to get as much land as possible. And every few seconds, based on how much land we have, we deal that much damage to the enemy's castle, and how much land they have deals damage to our castle. Of course, killing enemy units will actually help us win the game because every time we kill an enemy, we do a little bit of damage to the enemy castle. But territory is the key part. You need to build obelisk to grab territory. There's actually a lot of strategy involved, more so than you would imagine. You know, let's kill this guy over here. And this is one of those games where you jump really high, which is always awesome. You will shoot that guy. Although this skill is much more effective when uh, shooting a big group of enemies. And with a 50 versus 50 game, at choke points, it's very effective at times. And kill that guy there, he's pretty weak. Oh, he's dead. I don't think I got the kill though. That guy just gave me major gank. Sorry there, fake Joe. Toy box over there is a scout. Let's go get him. And my PW at the bottom is my mana, and I need to use that to use skills. I strongly advise you guys not to waste that all at once because when it runs out, it can be quite annoying. I'm gonna really zap that guy with this. And since every time you hit him, he gets a little bit knocked back as well, so it gives my teammates opportunity to catch up to him. And even though this game is pretty old, it's, it's really interesting, it's really fun. And these massive battles, I can just imagine, it's only going to get more and more fun as the game is actually released and everyone can customize their characters the way they want. Again, I think we're losing. I mean, every time I played, our team was losing, so... Damn, my team sucks. I suck too right now, though. Let's squeeze through these, this barrier. All right, just managed to squeeze through there, which is pretty weird. Wow, there you go. There's a giant right now. That's another player transformed to that guy over there. I just stealthed over here, so I can sneak up on people with my daggers, which I don't have equipped right now, so I'm not going to bother doing. I actually died by accident. Again, I do apologize for my suckage. I am playing as I record this. There you go, I got a kill. Press 06, got a kill, go me. Let's get out of here. And there's a lot of activated abilities as well. I'm really using one of my skills right now. I have Poison Arrow, I have Fire Arrow, which is a DOT. They have like almost like a Warriors of Hamstring move that pretty much slows my movement speed, they can catch up to me. There's all sorts of variety with skills. Each skill in the game can level up three times, and once you level up a skill three times, you can unlock new skills. And you, there's 
weapon specific skills so I have dagger skills and bow skills right now warriors will have two hand weapon skills and one hand weapon skills and that variety which pretty much uh, creates a bunch of different builds for each character so there is some sort of customization in the game I'm level 25 actually which is always nice and everyone else level 20 so I should have a little bit of an advantage over them it's a game well worth checking out and it can run very well on an older machine as well all right guys I am running out of time my one biggest complaint with this game right now is the tutorial here at the beginning. It's very long, it's really annoying to complete, but if you can complete that, the game itself is different, it's unique, it's worth checking out. So, later guys.